was 19 years old at the time. I had a really good opportunity to go to college, but things fell through a couple of months into it, and basically, I wasn't allowed to go back at that college. I'm not going to go into the details, but I found myself stuck. I was living at home with my parents and working at McDonald's most of the time. I was really disappointed in myself, especially because I didn't have anyone else to blame but myself. I seemed to be your typical college dropout that ended up working at fast food. But while I was working there, I had a couple of really strange experiences. So the first one happened like this. There was this really creepy customer. He was an old man, and he just seemed like the most insane individual ever. You just have to think of the physical embodiment of Florida Man. He always wore this bathroom robe with a stained white t-shirt underneath. Or shoes. He had these really old Nikes that seemed like they had been completely covered in mud and never washed. Everywhere he stepped, there was some residue coming off of his shoes. I don't know how far he lived, but this guy came in to eat at McDonald's four or five times a day for as long as I worked there. I never personally had any horrible experiences with him. It wasn't like he was this unruly customer. He always asked for extra ketchup, but it's not like that was a crime or anything. The story is weird because I remember talking about him with some of my co-workers. I had one friend there that I became rather close with. I remember talking with her about this creepy guy that had just came in to eat McDonald's all the time wearing his pajamas. When you work with the public, there are so many people and faces that you see all the time, and none of them mean anything, it's just another customer. But when you have someone like this, it almost makes the job a little bit more bearable, as weird as that might sound, a little bit more consistency to the job. Plus, making jokes about someone like that was kind of fun. But there was one day when the jokes weren't funny anymore, because he stopped coming in. They couldn't find out why either. I mean, when you see someone multiple times a day, every day for months on end, you get a little surprised when they stop showing up. It all just seemed, I don't know, unusual. I remember talking to my friend about it. Neither of us could imagine why he stopped. I remember getting a phone call at 2 in the morning that night though. I guess my friend had gotten curious and looked around online. She's a bit of an insomniac. I guess he had been arrested on multiple drug charges. She had found a picture of him in the public database for our county's police department. In the mugshot, he was wearing that exact same bathrobe that we always saw him wearing. That was interesting. Really weird to think that someone I saw and interacted with multiple times a day was an actual dealer. But I guess that was that. My other experience working at McDonald's was really bad. Not going to lie to you. It really freaks me out and really made me question humanity. So it happened like this, right? I was working the graveyard shift. It must have been around 12 a.m. and we didn't have any customers. We already cleaned all the machines as much as we could and there really wasn't anything to do. We lived in a smaller community so there weren't too many people coming in to eat at such a late hour. We had a few here and there but we were mostly just sitting around, particularly slow this night. I remember going over to check the garbage cans for the other side of the store. Occasionally we would forget to empty that garbage pail. It was directly behind a booth and out of sight from the area we normally worked in. I remember going over there and there were two big bags of garbage that needed to be taken out. They were too heavy to take out at the same time so I did what any sane person would do. I carried one out at a time. I remember bringing the first one. I threw it into the dumpster and I remember hurting my back a little when I did it. I went for a little bit of a theatrical throw and really felt it there. I went back into the store to get the second bag of garbage and I made my way outside. I got about 10 feet away from the dumpster when I saw something that shocked me. I dropped the bag of garbage. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a mutilated puppy. Its entire snout had been cut off. I wasn't sure if it was alive or not. It wasn't moving or anything. I took a step closer to try to see a little bit more and I just felt my heart drop into my stomach. It was the most horrifying thing I'd ever seen in person. It was definitely dead. It wasn't leaning up against the dumpster and it was just a horrifying thing to see. I ran back inside and asked my coworkers what we should do. 
We decided to call the police, but they didn't really help much. We were really freaked out at who could have possibly done this and why they would put the puppy there of all places. And the part that still freaks me out is that whoever had done this had been waiting for me to go back inside of the building and in the few seconds before I came back out, put it right next to the dumpster. I figured they must have been watching me. Didn't know what else to think about it though. Our McDonald's didn't have an outside camera other than the drive through so there was no hope of trying to identify the person that did this. But it still makes me sick to my stomach to think what that person could be like. A few years ago, I was down on my luck on the relationship scene. My girlfriend of three years had just broken up with me because she had just started dating her boss. And when I found out, I came to know that it had been going on for the last two years. Isn't that just PG? Anyways, I joined Tinder. Something that I am not proud of. I tried to connect with a bunch of girls at home that I can find someone decent while I am down. Don't get me wrong. I am not looking for a quick hookup, but I needed someone to fill that void from the previous relationship. I wanted someone to love. That's when I connected with Christina. She seemed really nice during the messages and we lived really close to each other. Too close, in fact. And we agreed to meet up at a local restaurant in the week ahead. I was getting really interested. We were messaging all the time. And within a short period of time, it was getting really serious. We went on our date and got on very well. And before long, she started telling me that she loved me. Now, I'm not sure how other people feel about this. But for me, it is a really big deal to admit this. And I certainly wasn't in a position to say it back to her. Something which she took very badly. She asked me why I didn't say it back. And me being the straight up guy that I am, simply told her the truth. That I just didn't feel that way. But if she allowed our relationship to grow and nurture, I was sure I would feel the same way with time and that people move on at a different rate, yada, yada, yada. She was really unhappy, but to her credit, she tried her best not to make me feel uncomfortable. And we carried on with our date that night. A few weeks later, things heated up a little more. We were moving up to the next level, if you know what I mean. And she ended up staying over at my place that night. I woke up about 3 a.m. to use the toilet. And when I look, she is not in bed with me. Now, this time being the first time we did the nasties, I wondered if she had just gone home. I wasn't really sure of the perimeter regarding this with her. So I look around and she is nowhere to be seen on the top floor. I go downstairs and the smell of fire catches my nostrils. I look outside my garden and she has taken this metal bin and started a fire. I ran up to her and asked her what the hell she was doing. And she was burning loads of my things. She looked at me with this cold, dead stare and said, you can't have any of this. That's why you don't love me because you keep things that she gave in this house. I was absolutely horrified. I don't know from where she made this assumption my CDs, DVDs, hell, even my iPhone, and a whole bunch of other stuff were now melting away in this fire. I was horrified, and I told her that she needed to go, and that I was calling the police and the fire department. The fire was put out pretty quickly, and I never spoke to her again. She definitely had several of her screws loose, and I hope that no other man falls for her madness.